Hello, Thomas Malchow here. In this video, I'm going to show you how to improve your hip internal rotation. Now, this is a very important video because having poor or decreased hip internal rotation is not only associated with poor swing mechanics, it's also strongly correlated with low back pain. So doing the routine that I'm about to show you will improve your mobility, improve the health of your back, and also make you more athletic. I'll show you the routine first, and we'll talk about the scientific rationale after. The first thing we're going to do is inhibit our tensor fascia lata and our gluteus minimus. Now, the interesting thing about the gluteus minimus is although it's part of our gluteal complex, unlike the gluteus maximus and gluteus medius, which extend and externally rotate our hip, the gluteus minimus is actually a hip flexor and it internally rotates the hip. It's part of our hip flexor complex. Okay, now I'm going to use a ball. You can use a foam roller. The tensor fascia lata is essentially right where our front pocket is, right? So right here. And the trigger point will be right about in this area here. So we'll survey around with the ball or with the foam roller, looking for the most tender spot. The gluteus minimus trigger point is just posterior to that. So about midline of the body, okay? So anywhere in this area here is where we're gonna find these trigger points. So I place the ball on the ground, situate my body so that I'm over top that area and right away, I found a spot, and this is the tensor fascia lata right here. So I'm gonna stay here for 30 seconds to two minutes. The pressure applied by the ball initiates a reflex inside the muscle, encouraging the muscle to relax. So after doing this for say 30 seconds to two minutes, I could just rotate the ball so that it's now a little posterior. So it's about in line with the midline of my body and I'll find another spot and that's the gluteus minimus. And again, I would hold this for 30 seconds to two minutes. The next thing we're going to do is mobilize the hip capsule itself. Now, as I'm going to explain after, the head of the femur gets stuck superior and anterior in the socket. And as a result, the capsule posteriorly and inferiorly tightens up. So we need a way to mobilize that capsule to help restore balance within the joint itself. A really good way to do that which is self-administered, is to use one of these green monster bands. Okay, so I'm going to situate it on an anchor somewhere. And I get the band up, right up in my bikini area, and right up as high as it can go. And I get down onto my hands and knees, and I want the band pulling lateral. So this is called the lateral distraction. It's a great general mobilization technique for the capsule. Now, I want a good amount of tension on the band. I don't want to feel like my hip socket's going to fall out, obviously, but I want a good amount of tension. The hip joint is a very strong joint. Now, once I get into position here, I'm going to practice just oscillating back and forth. I'm using my entire body to rock back and forth, and as I rock out, I'm stretching that capsule, okay? Now, once I get the rhythm of that and I'm feeling comfortable, the technique is one to two oscillations per second for 30 seconds. Okay, so I would get in position here and I would just oscillate back and forth just like this. Two oscillations per second for 30 seconds. The next thing we're going to do is stretch the hip flexor complex. Now this is a stretch we've done before, but I'm going to show you a variation that targets the tensor fascia lata and gluteus minimus specifically. Okay, so we start out in the hip flexor stretch that we've gone over in a previous video, remember, we're not doing it like this. We're going to get you in a right angle posture here at the knee, at the hip, at the knee here. I have this foot, the ball, dug in to get a little extra knee flexion there. I do a posterior pelvic tilt, squeeze this glute, and extend, and I get a stretch here in my hip flexor complex. But I want to target specifically the internal rotators of the hip flexor complex, which are the tensor fascia lata and the gluteus minimus. So what I'm going to do once I get into position here, so again, right angles, posterior pelvic tilt, squeeze the glute, and I'm just extending about five to 10 degrees. Now, if I want to target the tensor fascia lata and the gluteus minimus, all I have to do is externally rotate my hip. So I'm going to take my foot here and line it up with this foot, and other than that, the stretch is identical to the one that I'd shown you before. It's just now with that external rotation, we're targeting the TFL and the gluteus minimus, but we'd hold this for 30 seconds 
the two minutes. The last thing we're going to do is activate your gluteus medius and gluteus maximus. We're gonna use a hip bridge to do that with the band around our knees. So I'll get you down on the ground, place the band above your knees, And then we'll get down to position here. Now, the thing when you're doing this is be careful of your, of your feet, okay? I want your feet pointing straight ahead, second toes pointing straight ahead, knees bent as much as possible, preferably so that your shins are vertical. People will have a tendency to have their feet turn out, which is gonna be part of the dysfunction we're trying to get you out of. So be very mindful of their feet, make sure they're pointing straight ahead. And as you're doing this exercise as you're progressing through the reps be careful that your feet don't start to turn out right so maybe check them at every few reps just take a look and make sure that they're still pointing straight ahead now from here we're pushing out against the resistance of the band doing that is taking neural drive away from our biceps femoris which is the lateral hamstring and directing it towards the gluteus medius and gluteus maximus okay pull the belly button in lift your hips Hold at the top for two seconds, and then down for four. Okay, back up, hold for two, down for four. Don't let your feet turn out, and don't let your knees cave in. We'll do 12 to 20 repetitions. A decrease in hip internal rotation isn't only associated with poor swing mechanics, it's also very strongly correlated with low back pain. We should have between 40 and 50 degrees of hip internal rotation. Most of us do not. Now the interesting thing is, decreased hip internal rotation is usually a consequence of having lower extremity dysfunction. If you remember, lower extremity dysfunction is this functional pes planus and knee valgus where our feet turn out and our knees move in and that's a consequence or result of having excessive hip flexion, adduction, and internal rotation. But if our postural dysfunction includes excessive hip internal rotation, how does that reduce our ability to internally rotate our hip? Well, it has to do with the relationship between osteokinematics and arthrokinematics. Osteokinematics refers to joint action. So at the hip, we have flexion, extension, abduction, adduction, horizontal abduction, horizontal adduction, external rotation, internal rotation. Arthrokinematics refers to the motions between joint surfaces. So we have glide, roll, spin, compression, distraction. And the arthrokinematic motions accompany the osteokinematic motions and they work together to keep joint congruence, to keep the joint centered. So as I flex my hip, the head of my femur has anterior roll and inferior glide on the acetabulum, and that's under normal conditions. And it's completely reliant upon the synergistic action of all the muscles that surround the joint, that surround the hip in this case. And that's referred to as force coupling. If you have lower extremity dysfunction, you're gonna have altered force coupling around your hip. Your short and overactive hip flexors, internal rotators, and anterior ductors are gonna pull the head of your femur forward and up in the socket. And that's called arthrokinematic dyskinesis. So the common arthrokinematic dyskinesis at the hip is excessive anterior and superior glide. Now that really increases the wear and tear on your joint and reduces your mobility, including your ability to internally rotate because the surfaces are touching and they're pressed up against one another and they can't move properly, okay? So if you're trying to improve your hip internal rotation by just forcing more hip internal rotation, that's why you're not getting anywhere and that's why your hip hurts. If you want to improve your internal rotation, if you want to improve your mobility, you have to improve your arthrokinematics. My focus is to make your swing and your movement as efficient as possible. And I think of the body as being a human movement system. And the human movement system is comprised of three subsystems. We have the skeletal system, we have the muscular system, and we have the nervous system. And in order to optimize your performance, we need to optimize the performance of each subsystem. To optimize the skeletal system, we need to have precise arthrokinematics. 
to optimize the muscular system, we need to have optimal length tension relationships in all of your muscles. And to optimize your nervous system, we need to have optimal force coupling around all of your joints. Now, these three subsystems are very much interdependent. If we have dysfunction in one, that dysfunction will spread to the other two, right? If we have a short and overactive tensor fascia lata and gluteus minimus, that's going to create altered force coupling around our hip joint and create arthrokinematic dyskinesis, that is excessive anterior superior glide, right? If we want to optimize your performance, we need to optimize the alignment and functioning of each subsystem, and that's referred to as posture. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching.